Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena. Gonna grab Paladin here, the most overpowered class, because I played everything twice, and I have a daily quest for Paladin. Kicking off with a legendary whale. So I think I'm just gonna take the Justicar. He's uh, the strongest one in the abstract and ranked play, and here in Arena, if the game tends to go long, uh, this could really, really do a number. I mean, it makes... Uh, your recruits stick against mage, druid, and to a lesser extent rogue hero powers, and then against like warriors and priests, it just turns your hero power into a machine. And these are all okay. This this is certainly a pretty good pack of legendaries, but I have a feeling True Heart's the one to go with. Okay, here it's a tough call between this guy and the ogre. So the ogre's just a really great six drop, gives me some good end game, but this guy is removal. Hard to say whether the extra mana cost justifies the divine shield over a bluegill warrior, but honestly. Bad removal is better than none, and I think uh, there's other good six traps, but there's not so many other good removal cards. Okay, uh, Leopard Gnome is a good aggressive card, but I don't necessarily want to go that way with Paladin, so I'll take the Wolf, which is a bit of a safer play. Um, hmm, an extra health or Divine Shield. Wow, when you look at these side by side, you realize just how badly Silent Knight sucks. I'm going to take the Stalker. Okay, well, only one good card here, so let's just take it. And this guy has consistently underwhelmed me, just never done anything good with him. I'm just going to take the Raider. I honestly don't see the point of paying an extra mana for an extra health. And this thing can be good if I get, like, True Silvers or Argent Lances or something. Speaking of which, boink. Mukla's Champion is just a straight-up bomb so I'm gonna, for, for Paladin, so I'm going to take it. Hmm. Tough one here. This is really tough. So... Each of these cards is a really important role player in Paladin. It's one of those many, many picks where it's kind of like you want all of them, so it's just a matter of what you end up seeing. This guy gives me endgame and some healing. This guy gives me divine shield, and this gives me some more removal. I'm going to take the healing. Not sure if it's the right player or not, but I think healing is harder to come by. Okay, so there's more healing here, which makes me kind of regret the Guardian. And card draw. This is just bad. So it could be the face. This is a kind of like a generic card if the opponent plays something big i can get it two or healing and card draw i'm going to take the manipulator land hands is really slow if i hadn't taken guardian of kings maybe i would have taken the lay on hands there all right i'll take the shielded minibot even though the sheep provides some mass removal i find it's just not really worth it here's an interesting one do you want two copies of the champion it is a bomb card but the problem is that um if uh, if it doesn't have anything i mean I'm, I'm spiking at five here if i don't have anything else to play it's gonna be bad so here's the thing, if these were good 3 drops and 1 drops, I might have taken one, but since neither one's that great, I'm going to take the Mookla's Champion. Alright, let's just go for a 3 drop here, I think I have enough good 5s already. <laughs> so it's more 5s. You know what, um, I've got enough 5s, let's just take a really good 2 drop, this is great with the Wolf and just in general. Alright, only playable card here is that one, and that's a good one. Boy, the Snowbolt's cute and all, but Shredder is Shredder. Okay, both of these are really good. This is better for Mr. Tinkers. This is better for buffing. I'm going to take the buff card. I think it's important for Paladins to be able to do that. And here, the sheep again. Now we'll just take another Shredder. Alright, hammer or seal? Well, they both deal three damage. This one draws a card. Let's just take the hammer. Another bomb lobber? Well, this guy's trash, and this is trash. So yeah, I'll take another bomb lobber. Alright, do I take the Cogmaster here and hope I can follow it up with a uh, Shielded Minibot? That would be a good opener. Let's just keep it safe here and dra grab the Sorcerer. Okay, um, only playable card here is that one. Consecration. So this was a pretty lucky draft. We got, um, interestingly, no Murloc Knights, but lots of good Paladin cards. Got a Consecrate, Hammer, a True Silver Champion. Might even take another one, yep. Okay, Undertaker's a one-drop, but it's not a good one. Do I take the Taunt, or do I take the kind of Finisher type of card? Hmm. This isn't really the kind of six-drop the deck needs. A lot of my five... Actually, all five of my five drops are pretty conditional. My sixes don't have a lot of health. I think another big card that doesn't have good health isn't really worth it, so we'll take the cheaper Taunter. Hmm. Oh, the guy just in Jouster. I mean, it's just so bad if the Joust fails. I'll take the tank. Okay, another conditional 5-drop. You know, I'm just going to take the Fen Creeper. I've already got two Mukla's Champions, which pretty much need to be played with a hero ability right after, so they effectively cost 7. Let's take a real 5-drop and also add some taunt to the deck. 
A second consecration, some vigil's cute and all, but I think uh, the more mass removal is definitely better. And here's an interesting one. I have so many fives, it's scary to take a force tank max. This guy is another card like Mukla's Champion that sort of needs to be played with the hero power. Unless I get lucky with, like, spiders before it or something. And Matter Bomber's just junk. Not Matter, excuse me, just the regular old Mad. Well, I don't have any one drops, so it's never going to screw up my curve. I will right, we'll take him. Divine Favor doesn't seem like it's going to fly in this deck. And we know it's terrible. I've tried it so many times. Jeeves is just junk. So, crappy 2-3 with Taunt for 3, it is. Alright, so, that deck, or that draft, didn't give me any Murloc Knights, but it gave me two Mukla's Champion, which is almost as good. And, um, it gave me two True Silvers, two Consecrates, a Hammer, lots of times to take Seal of Champions that I passed on. Um, I, if, I, if I lose this, it's entirely because of um, either poor play or poor drafting choices, I'm just going to say it right there. I mean, I can still get unlucky and lose and whatnot, but really, I feel like the draft gave me the goods. So if this doesn't go as well as planned, it was the little choices, you know, taking the big instead of the small, taking the small instead of the big, that uh, determine how this is going to go. Okay, well, we got a curve here. A 2-3, three, a 3-3, three, three, and then some Paladin cards to catch up if I've fallen behind. Should I coin out the Stalker? So coining out the Stalker is interesting because it lets me play a Recruit next turn for that little extra smidge of board presence. And it's unlikely to die, but if she has Flame Cannon, I'm just going to feel dumb. You know what? I'm going to do it. Paladins, you got to fight for board control. Um, I was just going to play this, this, and one of these, so my coin wasn't going to come into play for a long time. Might as well use it now to get that extra 1-1 one, one out here. Alright, she doesn't have a Flame Cannon. So this is actually kind of nice. If I had not played the... Ooh, that's really nice. So I'm very glad I used the coin. If I hadn't used the coin, what would be happening, and I hadn't drawn this, I'd be playing the 2-3 in response to a 3-2. She'd hit me in the face, play another card, and I'd be behind. This way, um, I am actually in decent shape. Now, she got the lucky flip here, but it's all right. Of all the times to get unlucky, this is certainly not the worst. So I got a 4-4. She can kill my 2-2, but then I can kill it 2-1 with my 4-4. I think I'm doing alright here. And a lot of four drops I can also kill with true silver, but not all. So any 3-5 here would be annoying to deal with. She doesn't have a 3-5 though. She has a 2-3. She gets a lucky flip again. That's two times now, unfortunately. And a mech warper. Okay. So consecration doesn't really cut the mustard here. I could play the shredder. But no, let's just keep it simple, right? Let's just kill that, and kill that. So now she can ping this to death, but then she only has three mana to work with. And then I can truce over plus bomb lobber. That's almost certainly going to clear her board. There's a cat hair in my mouth. Oh yeah, there it is. Got it. Don't worry, guys. Got the cat hair. Harvest golem. Damn it. It's really the one thing I couldn't deal with effectively with Bomb Lobber. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is uh, play the Shredder. Beef up its health so it can't be pinged, and I'm going to kill off the 2-1. It's not ideal that this Golem couldn't be dealt with, but she pretty much had the best 3 drops she could have possibly hoped for there. So that was a bit unfortunate. Alright, well, it's 5 cards to 5. She has, the first, she has the play here. I have a slightly better board. It's really anyone's game. It's just a matter of how good the bomb lobber is going to be. If the bomb lobber is going to be ace, then I'm in great shape. All right, this. Okay, I hope I don't get a one health two drop. That would just be the worst thing in the world. Thankfully, it didn't happen. Okay, this is perfect. No, what are you doing? Why are you playing more cards? Oh, terrible. God darn it. I was really hoping I could just hit this and bomb lobber the 4 4. Hmm, so I can consecrate and then. That would actually pump this up to kill off the Dark Iron Dwarf. And then drop these spiders with my remaining two mana, setting up for a good Mukla's Champion next turn. Or I could hit the Damaged Golem, play the Lobber, and kill one of these things, but not the other. Honestly, I think now's the time to Consecrate. Because I've got these spiders and they work so well with the Champion. Works out okay. Trade two cards for two cards. So now she plays something. And I can go champion, recruit, and buff the board a little bit. Or pop the spiders, then Mukla's champion, then recruit, depending on what happens. Oh, wow, is she really doing nothing this turn? 
She got some fireballs or something here. A bunch of flame strikes, maybe. Yeah. She got cards like fireball, flame strike, and so on. Now, what I could do is I can actually play the infantry and make a recruit to get cha the champion to be better later. I'm gonna do this. Because if she's gonna have a flame strike right here, I'd rather she do it now than um, do it after I play the champion. And if she doesn't have anything, anything to play, then I might as well just get as much out on here as I can. Alright, she got a spell slinger, hoping to get a good spell. Rampage is not what I was hoping for, for sure. Because it's terrible. So hopefully she didn't get a good spell either. That's the main thing I'm hoping for now. She did get something good. This is the spell that she got from Spell Slinger. And it is... Well, it must not be that good, because she's really hemming and hawing about it. What is it, like a shiv, maybe? She just wants to do it for the extra card. Bane of Doom, that's a really good one. Oh, man. Alright, well, at least, um... Christ. At least she didn't get to use the hero power on it, but shit. Alright, so if I go the champion route, I can pop this thing and kill it. Having to throw both my minions away. Um, I can also Hammer of Wrath this thing, but then I don't have enough mana to bomb Lobber. Mm, wow. She got Bane of Doom and I got Rampage. That's just the worst thing. So I can just go for a YOLO Lobber, and uh, if it hits this great, if it hits this thing, I'm in a little bit of trouble. It'd become a 6-6. Six, six. Wait a minute, hold on a second. This is when your hero takes damage, so she'd actually have to ping her face. This isn't a Warlock. She has to ping her face to get this to grow. She's pinging her face, she's not pinging off my spiders. Hmm. Alright, I think I'm gonna just go for this. And, uh... Should I kill... Yeah, I'm gonna... I should, I should kill the Spell Slinger. Because this guy survives. So if she flame strikes here, that would be pretty annoying. I guess she can flame strike ping her face. That'd be really annoying. She's a blizzard, not a flame strike. Okay. So the blizzard is a little better because it means she has to ping this thing to kill it. So she's not pinging her face to making this guy grow, which means I can finally use my bomb lobber and play a pilot of treader. Okay. We're doing all right here. Maybe I made the wrong call playing into mass removal like that, but I feel like I, you know, I honestly feel like I held out and avoided playing into mass removal for a good long while. So I think it was a fair play. Okay, so it's nice that the Floating Watcher wasn't activated by her hero power triggering something else. That would have been bad. Frostbolt to kill my second Shredder is fine because I get a two drop out of the deal. And it gives me a card. Cool. I mean, I might have rather had something that actually stuck around and didn't die, but this is fine. Okay, we have a lot of different ways of killing this. I can Mookless Champion it. I can Hammer of Wrath it. But let's go for the Champion here. I mean, this just seems really solid. Buff up all my stuff. And kill the Worgen. Hopefully she doesn't have, a, doesn't have a second mass removal. This Consecration could have been some other good card. I forget what. So it's a little risky. But if this thing doesn't die and I can... Mukla's champion again. I'm gonna run away with the game unless she gets another flame, or unless she top decks a flame strike. By the way, there was a stealth buff here. The screw can now be inserted. Can't be taken out though, so it's kind of a lazy, lazy buff. She's actually gonna fireball my champion. So definitely that was worth it. All right, this is an awkward hand. These consecrations are just not looking so hot here. Should I hammer of wrath? Just do some damage and get a card. Um, I think I will actually. I should have done this before I attacked with my minions. But, um, yeah, just sticking around and doing nothing seems like the mis seems like a mistake here. Let's go for the throat. This is 610 damage. I just need one more damage. Actually, I'm threatening a lethal here with Consecration and my weapon. And I can get through some taunts with the Lobber. Plus Consecration is 6 damage. So I couldn't get through, like, a Sunwalker or a Sludge Belcher, but I can get through just about anything else. Ben Creeper? Uh, yes, I can get through it. Oh, but she plays the commander, so that thwarts my lobber, and Consecration doesn't necessarily kill this thing. Crud. Well, so should I play the lobber anyway, or just play the commander? You know what, this seems fine. Let's just do this and uh, play the commander. She's clearly struggling here. 
I messed up. I should have put this to the left of the wolf. So let's just... Oh, that's actually lethal? I clearly don't know how to count. But hey, it's lethal. Okay, great. Okay, well, that was um, a little bit of a topsy-turvy game. She sort of ran out of steam, and I was lucky for that. My Mukla's champions, though, were both good, so I'm glad I took both of those. Oh, man, Lay on Hands could have been taken over... What, what did I choose instead of Lay on Hands? Oh, I chose... I can't remember, actually. Lay on Hands is an epic, so there has to be an epic in this deck that I picked over Lay on Hands, but I can't for the life of me remember what it was. I didn't see any of my... Ex like, I don't know if I saw any of my cards that could have been more expensive things, like the... Force Tank Max that I passed over. Or the Ogre that I passed over. I up against Rocky Rambo. Hard to say how I fare against other Paladins. I mean, I've got a Legendary, which is certainly nice. But I don't have any Murloc Knights. But I do have Mukla's Champion. But Murloc Knight's a little better, because it costs one less mana. Alright, well, we've got our uh, curve here. 2, 3, 4. It's all about whether he's got a coin play. I mean, that's really it. If he doesn't coin anything out, then my Wolf, you know, can trade with some two drops. If he does coin something out, and especially like a 2-3, I can end up in trouble. Snorf, 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 snorf. Munch. Alright, doesn't have anything, and I even got a better two drop. Really built quite the mech deck here. So this can deal up to three damage. There's very little he could play now that wouldn't die to my buffed bot. But there are things. Coin three drop. Or various 1-4s. I'd love to see him make a recruit here. That'd be great. Oh, wow. Is he going to coin something? Like a Noble Sacrifice, perhaps? No, that's just weird. I wonder why he would just do this. He might as well have just made a recruit. A recruit also pops the shield, but doesn't cost a card. So that was actually a Stone Cold mistake. Because basically, the same thing that a recruit would have done, he spent a card to do. And a pretty good one, too. Knight of Struggles, I mean, it could have been pretty good later. So I'm going to call that a mistake. Alright, I can deal up to 5 damage with Mr. Tinkers, but I don't even need to. This is perfect. So he gets his card back, but he doesn't need cards here. He needs, um, he needs board. So the question is, uh, do I hit this thing? And yeah, it sucks that these guys are ripe to Consecration now, but that's okay. I couldn't have killed that any other way, so this is totally fine. He Consecrates here. I still have a Shredder, and then I follow up with another Shredder. That seems fine. Okay, he's actually going to hammer my Shredder, so he's setting up for a bigger Consecrate here. And unfortunately, this is going to die to Consecration. I am going to think. I don't want to really play the Wolf here, because I'm pretty sure he's gearing up for Consecration. So I can make a tank and a recruit, but really, what's the point of that? This isn't using up my mana as efficiently, but I'm fairly sure he has a Consecration. So it may look like Spider Tank um, Recruit uses up my mana better, but it really doesn't. Because the two mana is basically wasted because it dies to Consecrate. In fact, I'm going to do this. This is uh, normally what I'd call a greedy play. But here, it's this thing is just going to die to Consecration. So, I might as well put it back in my head. And he might say, Papa Boris, why are you so sure he has Consecration? Well, because he's done nothing all game. He has a gigantic hand of cards. And he chose to Hammer of Wrath of Shredder instead of killing off another minion. So, I feel like he's got it. Yeah. Yeah, boy, Papa B knows what's going on, guys. Gadgets and Jouster. I really don't care because whether it gets buffed or not, I just kill it with my Shredder. Alrighty, so do I want to kill it with the Shredder, or do I want to play uh, like a Spider Tank and Mr. Tinkers and kill this, or do I want to just play the Argent Commander and kill it, keep the Shredder alive? I think, I think this makes sense, I could get like a bonus health maybe or something. Another Time Rewinder, alright, that's fine. Oh shoot, that was a mistake, technically if a Doomsayer pops out, um, I would have regretted that. But, uh, yeah, this is fine. In fact, I should have actually thrown that in first, because I was playing another mech. I could have still triggered Mr. Tinkers, just in case of Doomsayer. Okay, Grand Crusader gives him a random Paladin card. And I think this is the time to pop my wolf, right? The alternative is to Peacekeep, but I can save the Peacekeeper for later. This thing I can just kill. Oh, it doesn't use my mana very effectively. Shoot, I probably should have used my Argent Commander here. Because, like, look at this mana situation. It just sucks. I, mean, I don't want to throw this out. Nor do I want to just Consecrate. Yeah, I should have, for mana's sake, played the Commander. Well, it's still looking pretty good. Am I actually threatening lethal? What is this? 3, 7, 8, 10, 15? Yeah, I'm definitely threatening lethal unless he can give a taunt or something. 
Tonight. No, we can't. All right, well played. That's uh, the GG right there. Bonkity, bonkity, shlonkity. In fact, a double consecration wins it as well. Well, all right, I'm not going to do any bad manner stuff. Let's just kill him. Okay, cool. So, uh, beat a paladin pretty good. Granted, got lucky top decking a shielded minibot just in time, but he did misplay. He threw away a knife juggler. In that game, I don't know how much the knife juggler would have mattered. But he did misplay on the knife juggler, and I did make a pretty good play using that time rewinder. A play that I would normally not make because it is greedy. But I just got the total read that, that he had a consecration, and it, sure, and it sure paid off because thanks to me playing that time rewinder, I got to have Mr. Tinker's back. And then he was able to kill a 5-5 five five and efficiently clear the board. Of course, I called that move a mistake, so maybe that was actually not right. Well, whatever. We'll, we'll see. Up against a mage. Hey, Scotty. My name is not Scotty. It's Papa B. The wolf again. Oh, I always just always get the wolf. That's the only one in the deck. I don't have two of them. Just the one. I always get the wolf as a two-drop. Although, I have been lucky so far and not actually had to play him on turn two. It's always looked like I'd have to play him. And I keep talking, top decking that shielded bot. Come on, game. Give it to me! Nope. I hope she passes the turn here. A coin to two, three would be really bad for my interests. So, do I play the wolf? I'm gonna play the wolf here. That's fine. I mean, it sucks if she two threes me, but I can cover with this guy, which is kind of cool. No. Got two threed. Oh, wow, she's going to Arcane Missile here, or Elven Archer or something? Who plays Elven Archer? Oh, my God. She actually got... I'm 0 for 3 now on Flame Juggler flips. So that's actually kind of shitty. But this is a really good situation, because the 3-4 uh, kills both of her board, and still needs a ping to be finished off. I've also got True Silver here, so I'm looking good. Unless she plays a Flame Cannon, in which case, fuck you, lady. Hey, fuck you. <laughs> that's right. You heard me. This is some new card back. Man, who even gives a shit about card backs anymore? Seriously. All right, lots of different choices here because this thing throws a kink into my plans. Um, I think I'm gonna play the true silver. The question is, do I freeze my tank or freeze myself? I think the right the right thing is to freeze the tank. Cause I wanna I wanna be able to attack for four damage. The tank only deals three damage. The tank can also be killed. So if I freeze my tank myself and she kills the tank, I got nothing. But now she's not going to freeze me, so I still got the attack. And I've got a Fen Creeper here, biding time until I can play the champion. And power up. We'll see if she has a fireball for this guy. This thing also can't be pinged just yet, which is good. Does she have a 3-5? That's what she needs right here, to survive my true silver. No, she doesn't have it. Okay, this is looking real good. So, let me think. Do I want to do some wacky play like this? No, definitely not. Let's just play the Fen Creeper and kill the Acolyte. I mean, she needs a Fireball for this, which is her entire turn. Then she uh, can't ping this off with the Elven Archer. So, that means this thing gets to live and hit her in the face. Well, I guess it's going to hit the Archer anyway, but then that means she has to ping next turn and she's not playing a 6-drop. It's just looking good. Fell Reaver? I hardly know her. All right, well, we actually have a pretty good answer to the Fell Reaver in the Peacekeeper. This is pretty much a nightmare situation when you play Fell Reaver, is having it be humiliated, because now you can't kill it off and it doesn't do anything. So this is looking solid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Charger here to kill off the 1-1, one, one, and we'll just hit her in their fat face. I might have had a decent chance against this, even it being an 8-8, because I've got two Taunters to bide time, but... This way I can mill her hand for a lot of cards. Alright, she's hoping for something good here. I got Savagery. Well, I got this off of Spell Slinger once, and uh, I was a Druid or something, and I totally... No, not a Druid. I was uh, some other class that gets attack power. But who was I when I had attack power? Was I, was I some weapon class, maybe? Yeah, anyway, I missed opportunities to use Savagery, and I was going to look out for it this time, like with True Silver and stuff. But it didn't matter because she conceded, because Peacekeeper's, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that is just nothing she could do. She chose Fell Reaver, which I can't call a mistake unless she had a better epic. Fell Reaver, I think, is pretty bad in Arena. I've lost to it, but I've also experimented with it, and I'm lost badly while using it. So, I think it's pretty bad, and, um, the only way I can call that a mistake on her part is if she had a decent alternative epic that she could have taken instead. 
Um, otherwise, she just got unlucky. We're up against Bob Marley. Bob, you look different. Um, you're also not dead. But you're a hottie, Bob. You sure are. All right, so we have a pretty good opener here. I'll coin out probably the tank. Hmm, don't even need to do that anymore. Interesting. So, with the Stalker, it's again the question of, do I coin this out so I can get an extra recruit? Well, as it is, when am I going to use the coin? I'm playing this on turn two. Let's say this on turn three. Turn four, I guess I could recruit, coin, and get one of these guys out, but I might as well get the recruit out earlier. Yeah, it's worth using the coin here. If this were just a regular 2-3, I wouldn't. But because only Flame Cannon deals with it, and anyway, I want Flame Cannon out of her hand in preparation for the Spider Tank, this seems solid. Plus, as a second player, it's nice to coin this out, because it means that if you make a recruit on turn 2... Haha, well played. Uh, she pings the recruit on turn 3, which is obviously less than ideal. So do I throw this out at her face so she can attack and ping it to death? Um, no, I don't see the point of that. Let's just pass the turn. So if she wants to ping this and throw away her third turn, that's fine. Hopefully she'll attack my face. I don't have a hero power that can be used. Ow, oh, butts. She got to use one mana and ping my thing off. That sucks. Hmm. Which of my many three drops do I play here? I think the tank's actually the one to play. So she can now run at this and ping it and go up a card and leave herself with a creature. But that's using half of her mana on turn four. It's one of those cases where I'm fine with her um, using her mana to kill her, to go up a card. And she's not doing that. All right, so how do we deal with this? Got a couple of different options. Here I could play the wolf, but the wolf doesn't actually help me kill this thing. I can just kill it by attacking her stuff. And then I can play a cleric. I can play spiders, which are really good. And then also, let's say, make a recruit and just get a really big board then I'd probably just kill off the mirror image. And then what, not even attack with the other thing? I could play the cleric, but that still requires me to hit this with both of my cards. But then this thing can't be pinged to death. Hmm. Yeah, let's do this. I'm not sure if this is the right play, but it's the play I'm going to make. So what I'm basically trying to do here is get her to throw the 2-3 at my 3-2. Then I have a pair of 3-2s that can kill the mirror image and bomb lobber. Her five drop. Ah, it's a sludge belcher. It's not a good bomb lobber target. And my wolf doesn't help me kill it either. That plan definitely backfired. Crudsicles. Should I actually peacekeep the sludge belcher? Does that even make any sense? Um, no. Let's just, uh... Let's just do this and think about it. I can hit, hit, and kill have a couple of things left with one health. Hmm. Man, I don't know. Don't know what the right play is. All right. Oh, right, I should have really killed the little ooze if I was gonna kill this thing, but all right, it's fine. So we'll do that and that. And uh, pass the turn. I'm not sure if I made the right choice there, but it's a choice I made, so we'll see. If she plays anything huge, I've got the Peacekeeper. If she plays anything little, I've got the Lobber. She pings, so she's playing a maximum of a 4-drop. It's a Water Elemental. Darn it! Come on! Can't catch a break. Or can I? Hmm... Basically, this and this are the same, but this costs more mana, so I might as well use it. And what do I throw away against this elemental? The wolf or the cleric? Uh, the other one stays at one health, so I'm not really sure it matters. We'll do the cleric. Alright, so she pings the wolf. I've got four damage plus a lobber here. I've also got a peacekeeper. I've got a decent armada of things. I can also play a couple of decent cards. Sadly, no Seal of Champions to buff this with. She's actually got a Mad Scientist. Hmm. I'm assuming that means she has Secrets, otherwise she wouldn't play it on turn 7. She has a Secret right now. Fascinating. Well, I'm going to pop my Lobber here. Oh, no, no, no. I think this is better than the Lobber. So let's see what Secret she gets. Let's try to fish out a Vaporize or an Ice Block with this guy. It's one of those. 
to vaporize, unfortunately. And uh, do I give her a haunted creeper? Eh, it's not the end of the world. Okay, so I did give her a haunted creeper. I think it's better than giving her like a 3-3 three, three or something. I guess the 3-3 three, three I could have dealt with with that. Hmm, maybe I should have actually waited and made a recruit instead. Crap, I might have made some misplays in this game. I've got two consecrations in here, not seeing either one, unfortunately. Mookla's champion, are you friggin' kidding me? Oh, man. Now I can't get past these mirror images. Mirror image plus Mookla's champion is a really good combo. Shit, if I don't get consecration on my top deck, I'm gonna lose this game. And I don't know. Might have been misplays on my part. Because maybe if I had played better, I'd be ahead more right here, and uh, this wouldn't be such a disaster. I can't kill these mirror images with what I have. I have to take a 1 in 4 chance with Bomb Lobber. Which is pretty abysmal. Justicar Trueheart? Huh. No, I, I, gotta, I gotta take my chance here. I just gotta take it. And of course I hit the worst possible target. I'm gonna play this mainly to just, uh, you know get it to reduce the damage, fight for the board. Although I didn't have to give her these spiders. If she hadn't had these spiders, the champion wouldn't have been quite so bad. There would have been, uh, I would have had an extra chance of killing it with a lobber. Yeah, I misplayed this game. That sucks. I hate that I, I hate to say it. But I definitely bungled this one. Some better choices could have put me in much better standing to be more competitive here. She's got three cards. If she had no cards, I might have a chance, or like even one card. But with three cards, it just seems likely she either has removal or big minions. And, um... She just gets to keep buffing shit with this champion. Cone of Cold? No, Fireball. So she has to be Fireball on this. So she's trying to ride Mukla's champion all the way to victory. Keeping me from killing it while keeping a lot of minions out. A Consecration actually still... Uh, it's actually not good anymore. I don't get past this mirror image. Yeah, I'm just toast. Shredder. Well, I gotta play this thing and... Uh, Get a couple of recruits out. I'm just going to pop these spiders. Increase my total damage output. But she can, like, ping a recruit, but this buffs to 3-3. Three, three, it kills my 6-3. I just lose. I didn't get Consecration, but I can't really claim bad luck. I really just misplayed this game. Oh, this getting buffed by Mukla's champion. So good. Man, that mirror image, too. If it had weren't for that, I could have killed off the champion before it became a problem. And she wouldn't have had two things to buff with it. That was pretty much the only thing she could have played, because it was turn 6. It was the only way she could have gotten Mukla's champion out that turn. Arcane Blast on a 1-1. Alright, well, she just has so much uh, board here, that and I don't have any board clears. Consecration doesn't work, that even with my stuff... Well, alright, let's, I guess, uh, take a 3-8 with Enrage. And, uh, I don't even know, man. I'm just, I don't think I can, I can win this. But, Faceless Manipulator... Oh yeah, that's right, that's what I took over the Lay on Hands. Right. Another Mirror Image. Wow, she had three Mirror Images. She really went for the Mukla's Champion Synergy there. Okay, oh wow, she just gets to kill me. Cool beans, Beauty Queen. Ah, I'm annoyed. Oh wow, that's completely pointless bad manners. <laughs> So annoyed that I misplayed that. I, I could have played differently against the Sludge Belcher. I could have um, played differently with my True Silver. Could have played the Bomb Lobber at a different time. I mean, there's a lot of things I could have done differently. That game was mine to lose. Darn. Oh, man. Oh, man. All right. Well, still, we got up to 3-0 and o with pretty smooth sailing, and had an arguably winning game that was bungled due to misplay, so that bodes well for the future of this deck. Hopefully um, I don't make any more mistakes, and we can actually ride this one out to 7 where it deserves. Another mage! So we got, what, like, three mages and a paladin or something? Or two paladins and two mages? Alright, life stealer here, the cleverly named mage. Um, unfortunately I don't have the coin here. So I'm hoping she passes turn 1, because if she does pass, this is pretty strong. It can get buffed by the Cleric to be a spider tank on turn 3. I think it's even better than playing out these spiders. Now the spiders, you know, they're good against her removal, but they just don't get buffed as well by the Cleric as this guy does. So this is going to be my thing to play. Ah, she has a play. God darn it. Alright, well, let's see what it is. 
A loot hoarder. Interesting. So that actually makes me want to play the spiders. And in fact, I think I will. I know the spiders take care of the loot hoarder. And then next turn, this is still not a bad play, buffing either the spiders or buffing one of the little ones that pops out, depending on what happens here. She actually chooses to go Pop Goes the Weasel on me and ping a spider. I wasn't expecting that, because uh, it's a mistake to coin a thing on turn one if you're not going to have anything to do next turn, unless you have a good reason. Like, I think I've had some good reasons, you know, with me being a paladin, getting out an extra 1-1, one -one, having buffs, and so on. She really didn't have any good reason for coining out that hoarder. Okay, Dawn Run Mage is kind of interesting here, because I have to hit it with both of my creatures to kill it. But I will. Simple as that, I'm just going to do it. So sure, she can ping off my 3-1, but then she's spending half her mana, and I've got a 4-3. She's got 7 cards. After the ping, I'll have 6, drawing 7. I think I'm doing just fine. Plus, Mr. Tinkers is dropping as a 4-4. This just looks solid to me. Okay, this is looking good so far. So we'll, uh... Actually, wait, do I want to get greedy here and keep my 2-1? Huh... I think I do. I want to encourage her to use her hero power instead of playing real cards. Alright, reversing switch is cute. But I might as well just play my stalker here. Put it in between my big cards so she can't cone of cold this and this in case that's what she has. She's got eight cards, pings this. I still have seven to eight. I mean, and we each have a, we each have a spare part. This is looking pretty solid. Okay, so she played a good 3-drop and pinged my dude. Got Nat Pagel. He whiffed. Um, do I play this? Yeah, because this goes badly against Flame Strike, but we're a turn away from that right now. And it's okay against the Blizzard. With, two, with, with this being at 4 health and this being at 4 health, I'm okay against the Blizzards. And plus it's a rare. She's not likely to have it. So Flame Strike's a turn away, and I'm getting some good damage going here. Getting some fat beats. Wow, that's actually uh, pretty annoying. Wow, well played, lady. Well friggin' played. Does the reversing switch help me? Making, making this a 2-5? No. Not really. I really want to drop a Fen Creeper here because it survives the impending flame strike. You know what? I'm just going to suck it up. And, um, she didn't ping the spider away, so we'll just use the spider to kill that Tron. Uh, do I kill these lance carriers? Let me think about that. Hmm. That's giving up eight damage to kill a couple of lance carriers. It's just not worth it. Eight damage is a lot of damage, and I'm threatening her with lethal here. Because I've got reversing, like this, reversing a switch is 4 damage, and then this is 12 total. She flame strikes here, she could have then killed off the Fen Creeper, and I would have regretted maybe keeping those guys around. Okay, so she's dead. Oh no, she's not! I forgot the, pos the potential for the one mana to actually matter. Whoops. Alright, can I still kill her? Uh, well, I've got 3, 4... 8 damage. It's it's not enough to kill. So I'm just going to keep it simple then. We'll just play another big fatty. This could have been what? Like a Seal of Champions? Seal of Champions would have given me the win right here. It's too bad. Yeah, I could have reversing switched this for 4 extra damage total. It wasn't lethal though. And I didn't want to YOLO the Mad Bomber. Alright, she actually finds a Blizzard, which is lucky. Because it's lucky she didn't have this earlier, back when I played into it on turn 6. Okay, so I don't get to kill her, because this is only 4 damage. Unfortunately. I mean, I can YOLO Bomber, but it's only got 3 bombs. The odds of hitting her twice is pretty, pretty small. I'm just going to beat on poor Pagel here. Hell, he gave me a card. It's fine. All right, let's do that. And I'm not going to play any of my things because I'm crappy against Flame Strike here. And I'm threatening lethal otherwise. This just needs to get through, and then the Reversing Switch Infantry gives me the kill. She's got to have some pretty sick saves here to survive. So, like, a Flame Strike, I guess, would be pretty good. But then the bomb, then on a clear board, the bomber's got a 50-50 shot of hitting her twice. Oh, she doesn't have it. She has a Fireball. It's not good enough. 
She's making the right plays here. She's hanging on. She's doing what, she, what it takes to hang on, hoping to top deck into her flame strike, I guess. But unfortunately for her, I do have the remaining damage. Ah, secret. This is actually kind of weird. All right, let's uh, let's play around this this Maui. So first, let's check if this is ice armor. It's not. Now, if I play this, mirror entity is going to give her the uh, taunt. So what I need to do is I need to bait out the mirror entity. Which it is. Then I can play this, and I, if uh, if it hadn't triggered mirror entity, I would have fished for um, I would have fished for the counter spell with the consecration. And that, as they say, is that. Well, my last few first time videos were a little on the short side, so let's make this one a little on the long side and play one more game. I don't know why she gave me bad manners there, because it was a fair fight, and she was at, like, two health. It's not like I got ridiculously lucky, did it? is it? So, I don't know. Seems like it's fine. Alrighty. Let's see what our uh, next... Oh, it's in the... Yeah, I clicked away for a second, hoping uh, that I could... Uh, see my opponent when I was done, but no, oh, it's another, so it was all paladins and mages, wasn't it, in this one, Avada Kedavra, okay, well, my deck continues to deliver the goods, we got pretty much the best two drop in the entire universe for paladins in the bot, and then, um, I can buff it to make it kill a three health minion, obviously a lot can go wrong, he could coin into a knife juggler, he could uh, coin into a spider tank, he mulliganed his two middle cards, so his other two cards seem to be good. Well, let's see if he's got the coin play here. Against another paladin, coining out is uh, sometimes, if you're a paladin against a paladin, coining something out is a little better than usual, even if you're just going to recruit next turn, because the fight for board control is so important. Okay, so he's got a secret here. Which makes me wonder, because if it is a Noble Sacrifice, I'm going to want to throw the spiders at it, but if it's Avenge, I wanna, I'm want i going to use this Shielded Bot to kill whatever he plays before I can uh, put two minions out on the table. I will. It will suck if it's a Noble Sack, though. I mean, it doesn't suck that much. I still go up a card, but in the fight for board presence, it kind of sucks. Still, it's good to get the Noble Sack out of here, so I can truce over on turn four and not run into the Sacrifice. Hmm, kidoki. Hmm, kidoki. Hmm, kidoki. Hmm, kidoki. All right, so he's gonna do this. Let's see if he's just trying to hold out against the noble sack. Ooh, mad. Oh god, I don't want to play this and like have my shield get popped. So we'll just do this and see what happens. All right, it is a noble sacrifice. Okay. So do I take my chances with this bomber to kill off his recruit? Or do I just say, F it and play this? I'm just going to play this. This puts out a lot of power and toughness. This is a total of 7 power and toughness. So it's equivalent in total power and toughness to a spider tank. And it's on curve. I think it just wasn't worth it to hold back myself on mana for a YOLO play. This could have been way on hands. I guess I'm glad it's a faceless now. If he does play like a good 5 drop, like a sludge belcher or something, that would be nice to have. And I do have the board lead right now. He still has his coin, though. He could coin into a good 4 drop. If it has 5 health and survives against the true silver, it's going to be annoying. He has a consecration? Looks like he has a consecration here. Hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play the creeper and a recruit. Don't want to play the bomber, not just because I don't want a yellow, but because I'm pretty sure he's got a consecration. And this just makes you feel so bad about playing consecrate. Because the two spiders pop out. Now the real problem is I got nothing on turn 5 after he consecrates me. Because this thing is just a 1-1. One, one. So it's not good. He doesn't feel good. But he's doing the right thing. He's killing off my board. Or some of it. Hoping I don't have a good 5 drop. And he lucks out. So all I can do is put out a true silver. And I'm ready to kill whatever he plays. Copy and kill. So it's not the end of the world. Like It, it could have been a lot worse if I didn't have this. But... A good 5-drop would have been much better here. Alright, Argent Lance is a pretty good play on his part because it clears my board without giving me anything to kill with my weapon. Or, little does he know, copy with my faceless. Hmm. Alright, he took out my spiders. I'm going to turn away from this guy. Oh, this is so annoying. 
Mr. Tinkers. Sucks, but it's what's gotta get played. You might say, Paul Boris, why not play the Mad Bomber, like, and try to kill off his recruit? Because it just dies to the Lance. I might as well lose the recruit to a Lance instead of the, bat the Mad Bomber, which has actual stats. All right, Master Jouster. All right, this is actually kind of interesting, because if he wins the Joust, I get a better card, and he does win the Joust. But I have a pretty good answer to it, which is itself. It's kind of unfortunate I can't kill it. Should I try for a Mad Bomber? No, because then this thing wouldn't have a Divine Shield. Hmm. But if I can hit this shield off, I can actually kill this thing, which is worth it. Yeah, this is totally worth trying for. So I don't know what the odds are of hitting this once, but it didn't hit it at all. Well, I mean, it's kind of an interesting consolation prize here. I still get a 5-6 with Taunt and Divine Shield, and I'm actually going to use my weapon to ping off that shield. I think it's worth it. So now it feels real bad for him to hit like this. And um, I got this health sitting here that was just being wasted because I was at full health, so I might as well have just done that. He has a lot of cards, eight, nine cards. I only have seven, technically, eight. Now this can give me up a card, this can get me up a card, my weapon can get me up a card, and the Divine Shield could get me up a card. So I have a lot of opportunities to, get to go up an extra card, but I haven't, you know, technically invoked them yet. He's got a lot of possible answers here. I know he has a Murloc Knight in his deck. So a Murloc Knight Recruit wouldn't actually be a terrible play here. It'd be kind of a pain for me to clear out his board, especially if he got a good Murloc off the flip. And what's kind of annoying is that this guy has more health than attack. So if I have the Divine Shield and he doesn't, he still, you know, is in good shape. Oh, he's actually going to waste a Seal of Champions just to ping off my shield? I'm pretty happy to see that. Unfortunately, he's going to at least make a Recruit. So Bomb Lobber doesn't work. But I can hammer this. Oh my god, Bomb Lobber does work. Unless he has... Oh, he's going to coin a Recruit out. You ass wagon. Man, that was a really good play on his part. Because if he hadn't done that, hammer on this, and I could have Bomb Lobbed that guy. But as it is, Bomb Lobber is obviously not that great. So anyway, um, I think we're just going to keep this real, real simple. I am going to hammer this guy. Let's go up a card. Do that. Do that. Do this. And I'm just going to play the Exorcist. I think the extra power is worth it over the 1-1. One, one. And uh, if I play the Champion next turn, I can make a Recruit then. I didn't have enough mana next turn to Champion, Mukla, and Recruit. I was a mana off. So this is actually pretty good. Now he's got 6 to my 6. And I get to go for the Champion here. Oh, is he really just going to Sludge Belcher recruit on turn 8? Sludge Belcher is a good card and all, but he needed more. Ah, okay. So he's ready to kill my Jouster. Hmm, how do we deal with this? I could throw that away, lob down to 1 health, and throw the Exorcist away. Or I could just go for the Champion, recruit, buff everything up, and this thing goes to 7 health. Then I could ping off the shield with the Lobberer, kill this with the Jouster, stay at 1 health, and kill off the Slime with the Exorcist, and have a Mukla's Champion out. Both seem like reasonable options. Um, Let's go for the Champion play. This seems pretty good. The disadvantage is it puts this at lower health, so it can be killed off, but... Um, I don't know, it seems alright. I've got a champion hidden behind a couple of taunts. Consecration doesn't kill the champion. And then if he doesn't kill the champion, he's going to lose the game. Because next I can like play this guy and recruit if the champion's out. He needs to have an answer for the champion. Now, if he does have like a double consecrate or something here, we're back on even footing. Well, he'll have three cards to my four. And I'm, I'm going to be playing this. Ooh, this is a good sign. Paladins don't have Shadow Flame, so this is just not doing anything to kill my champion. Yeah, those um, proactive Seals of Champions, he actually did it twice this game where he played Seal of Champion without actually killing anything. He just played it on a minion with summoning sickness. It really didn't work out. Whoa, that is the misplay of the century. What are you doing? So he coined out earlier a recruit, so he doesn't have the coin now. 
and he just played this without having a Murloc. He might as well have just played this and recruited. Then he would have had three minions instead of two, and if he had gotten a good Murloc, then then um it would have been really helpful. Dang, he really messed that up. I, I mean, I was probably going to win regardless of what he did, but he really messed up that play. That was such a strange misplay. All right, so um, what we do here... Let's see, buffing this thing doesn't actually make a difference. So what we'll do is we'll kill the Shredder. Give him a card. Ah, he got a really good two drop. Crikey. I was really hoping that wouldn't happen. Well, that just means we lose this thing. So then I play the Lobber to kill that, and I make a Recruit to buff my stuff. And hit him. Can I actually... Oh my god, did I miss Lethal? I totally forgot to look for Lethal. I probably did, didn't I? That thing did not have... Nothing had Taunt. I could have hit him for like 7 damage. I screwed up. I had Lethal and I missed it. The guy played it perfectly. He tried to bamboozle me with a Murloc Knight. Maybe that's why he did it. It was, it was so that... I would be tempted to forget about lethal. Well, I don't know of any Murlocs that have taunt, so this should be over now. He didn't get his charge Murloc, and he concedes. Yeah, I misplayed that. I really missed the lethal, but I had a pretty strong edge, given that he couldn't kill my Mookla's champion. So, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and or subscribe, and I'll see you again soon with some more Hearthstone action. Hopefully this deck goes all the way to 7. I'll see you guys again in a moment.